everybody and thank you for watching another video uh, in this channel. Today I'm going to talk about uh, microcrystalline cellulose and uh, HPMC, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Uh, these two excipients are a request by one of the viewers that asked me to do the uh, video on the quantitation and qualification of these two excipients. Uh, here the list of excipients and uh, in his list these two were among them. So this, is a, this video is a request. Now HPMC and uh, marginal crystal cellulose are excipients that are used in solid dosage form, also in a liquid or suspension. And depending on the dosage form that they are used in, their function will be different. Now in the case of this viewer, uh, when I went through his list, he's definitely working on a tablet. So for his case, uh, the function of these two excipients are binder. So they are you, they are, uh, their function is to hold this uh, powders together and the, that the tablet can retain its uh, physical structure. Uh, well, microcrystal cellulose is, as, as it, the name says, is a cellulose, it has a, a 3D structure, and HPMC is the modified cellulose. The main difference between them is that um, microcrystal cellulose is insoluble in water, whereas HPMC is soluble. Now, if someone want to do the, let's say, wet granulation, they may prefer to use a uh, uh, microcrystal cellulose over HPMC. Now I'm just going to show you a really quick demonstration uh, on the solubility. I pour a little bit of the microcrystal cellulose, I pour a little bit of the HPMC in these two different beakers, two beakers, add a little bit of water and uh, see what happens well in the case of uh, marshall crystal cellulose uh, it is there's nothing happening if you just make a suspension and if you let it sit then marshall crystal cellulose will go at the bottom of the flask in the case of hpmc what is happening here is that well you've got clumps forming I don't have a homogenizer with me at this time, but what you can do is to use a homogenizer and to disperse the powder and then maybe by applying temperature you will have this uh, the excipient dissolving in the water. So this kind of shows that how they even look in, in the water. Uh, I know I can put my finger on it, I can touch it. The, the feeling is that I'm forming a gel and it's just kind of this is like a gel material and uh, it's kind of slippery so definitely you know if I use a homogenizer and a proper mixing I will form a gel and this is quite like a gel, jelly feeling you're touching a gel with my left hand I'm touching the other one it's just I'm touching water there's nothing no feeling whatsoever so this is the difference from the solubility point of view I'm going to back to my computer and I will continue this video by showing you slides on how you can do the quantitation of these two excipients in your formulation. Okay, talk to you soon. Hello everybody, and uh, so I'm going to continue this video by showing you some slides. And as I said earlier, uh, this video is on uh, quantitation or Q and Q of uh, microcrystalline cellulose and hydroxypropyl metal cellulose. This video is a request by one of the viewer uh, that asked me to prepare video on quantitation of microcrystalline cellulose, HPMC, and other excipient that he had uh, in his comment. I have done already the magnesium stearate and the video is available. So this video is on uh, MP, uh, HPMC and MCC. Uh, very briefly, microcrystalline cellulose is 
is a cellulose material which is uh, not water soluble because of its 3D structure. Uh, uh, the primary use of this excipient uh, is a binder and diluent in a solid dosage form. Also, it is used in the, let's say, uh, liquid formulation as a viscosity modifier. Uh, MCC uh, has a monograph in USP, so it is the compendial excipient. And so you can purchase the USB grade MCC and there are certain tests that you need to do for the raw material testing that you can go to the USB NF and, uh, and take a look at them. Uh, the HPMC is a modified cellulose that the, it is, it has a met, it is methylated and isopropylated and it makes this excipient now highly water soluble. And as I showed you before, uh, in the presence of water, this excipient starts to form a gel. In a solid dosage form, it is used as a binder. And uh, also it says um, you can use it in a film coating material. And in a liquid formulation, it is used as a viscosity modifier, especially like, let's say if you want to make a suspension or even gel formulation, you may use the hard HPMC. Uh, HPMC also has a monograph in USP. Uh, it is not called HPMC, it is under the name Hypromellose. And the USP grade of Hypromellose or HPMC, uh, they have four different types. And these types are based on the uh, amount of met metoxy or hydropropoxy groups on the HPMC. So how much methyl is under, how, how much isopropyl is under. So you have four different grades. So if you want to purchase this material, you will you have four different types of USB. Now, in case of your reverse engineering, you, you may need to figure out which type of HPMC was used in the formulation. Uh, FDA IID database has a lot of lot of entry for the microcrystal cellulose and HPMC. I'm not going, going to go over it, but you definitely, based on the formulation that you are working on, you need to go and take a look at what is the maximum limit used in that particular formulation. And then this one is for the HPMC, uh, in the entries in uh, FDA IID, IID database. Now for the uh, qualification and quantitation, uh, like amount determination or grade determination, for HPMC, I'm going to talk about HPLC with RI detector and GC. And in the case of MCC, I'm going to talk about gravity, gravimetric method only. So for the HPMC with the GC, if you take a look at the USP, you see there is a, is, there is a GC method. And this method is for determination of uh, amount of methyl and isopropyl on HPMC. So it is primarily used to uh, do the quantitation of how much methyl you have or how much isopropyl you have and then uh, you will look at those numbers and you will cross check versus the specification and you will say pass or fail and definitely each as you, as you can recall there are four different type of HPMCs and so that you have to meet the specification now can this method to be used for uh, uh, Jelani purpose meaning that can you use this to do the HPMC quantitation in finished product? The, the answer may be yes and no. I mean, primary, uh, I would say that um, it is possible in that formulation, there are other source of methyl isopropyl that come, uh, could be introduced into the sample solution and it will interfere with your work and or, may, or you may not. I don't know his active. I don't know if, he, if his active has isopropyl or methyl group on it. I don't know the amount of his active. So it, work needs to be done. And uh, it may be very promising. I mean, you definitely can take a, uh, use this method for your purpose, but you definitely have to look at the specificity and see if there is interfering peaks coming from other excipient. Overall, I would say this work is, uh, it is very promising. It's very nice to do and it is not, probably easy there's multiple steps to it 
the, the next method for the HPMC is the HPLC with RI detector. Now in this mm, experiment or in this method, you dissolve your uh, formulation in water and then you do the quantitation of HPMC uh, using size exclusion chromatography. And you, you will get three peaks. Now depending on the, the type of column that you use, depending on the, your retention uh, flow rate that you have, if you decide to use buffer rather than butter, these three peaks will come at different retention time. Uh, overall, in my experience, uh, these uh, modified cellulose usually sh display three peaks. So HPMC will show you three peaks. Ethyl cellulose probably will show you three peaks. Uh, metal cellulose probably show you three peaks. So, but the, the relative intensity would be different when they're gonna uh, elude from the color would be different. This is a good method for amount determination and probably uh, you could get some great determination as well. Uh, but, but I would say that probably the GC method is a much better technique if you want to determine the grade of HPMC, not this technique. This is much better for the quantitation. Uh, for the MCC uh, microcrystalline cellulose, the method uh, for quantitation that I propose is the gravimetric method. And this technique, what you do is that you dissolve your formulation in water and you filter it. And uh, hopefully all your XCPL will dissolve in water and pass through the filter and you collect your MCC, dry it and do the amount determination. Uh, now, if there are some other excipient, you know, formulation don't fully dissolve in water, so you may want to use water and organic uh, mixture, and then you will get things going. Uh, this is the best method that I had to, I had in my arsenal to do the MCC. And if anyone else has have done MCC and have a better method, and I would appreciate you write a comment and just enlighten us. Uh, so going back to the uh, Jelani's comment, for case of HPMC, I propose the GC and uh, HPLC RI, and uh, I will say all the excipients that he has, probably they will not interfere with the quantitation. I don't know his active, maybe in the case of GC, the, the active will interfere, I don't know. So you, he or anyone else working on this formulation have to do the specificity work. Uh, in the case of microcrystal cellulose, I would say most of the material are water soluble. I don't know it's active, it may active may not be. And I'm quite sure magnesium stearate is not quite water soluble. So during the washing steps, uh, if you, someone needs to use some organic solvent to get rid of magnesium stearate. And um, the references are FDA, uh, database and uh, the suppliers website thank you very much for watching this video and um, if you have uh, if you like this video I appreciate you press the like button and um, if you have experience working with these two XCPS I appreciate writing a comment thank you very much and have a great time